Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Mm, just bought out of coffee there. Okay, this is where I just finished up the other video where I introduced you to the 12 volt Ryobi battery charger. Uh, I got the top plate off of it. We're going to finish taking this apart and we're going to talk about in detail about some of the things about this so that if you don't already have experience at doing this sort of thing, you'll get some better details and we're going to get some close ups of this thing once I take it apart. So the first thing I want to do is um, let's take the other part of it loose and let's take the shell off of this thing completely. So if I turn this upside down, let's take the other four screws out that need to come out. And if you're going to pull this um, shell out, you need to also take this clamp loose here. This is the anchor clamp for this so that it doesn't get jerked out of the wiring connector in there. And so in order to take it apart, we do need to do that. So let me tie this back in so it's less likely to fall off. Now let's take this loose. So if I take this off, there's the other part right there. This is the uh, receptacle that the battery goes in here. And this is the PVC pipe. There's your little battery clip. One of the uh, six parts you have to buy. And let's take this. Oops. And now it comes out. Turn it at an angle, and you can slide that out. And as you can see, this is just a shell made. I put blocks in the corner from the top to the bottom. They run the full length inside. And that's what kind of helps give this box its durability and gives me a place to screw the plates in place on the shell. So just a piece of Velcro with a screw in it for the holding to manage the cable. So let's take a close look at this thing. First thing I'm going to do is let's take this cable here completely off. It doesn't need to be on there. And because I use these lever connectors here, these things are awesome. And because I use these, all I have to do is lift those two up and I can take the wire out of that little connector. So now we can work on this thing without this dangling all over the place. Now, the two wires to the fan are hooked into the this is 12 volts because this is the source where the power is coming into this unit so on this side it's still 12 volts here and from here it goes into the boost converter and you can see the wires right here are very short between the connector here and where they're soldered onto the board for the uh, boost converter uh, the outs are these two wires right are these two wires right here and they go into these other connectors over here I have three connectors here one of them is this connector right here for connecting the voltmeter the battery positive and the boost converter positive all hooked to this one connector here it's a three-way connector uh, lever type I think these are Shirley's, the brand name. I get them off of uh, eBay. They're actually pretty good little units. Uh, and I, I bought a, a variety of them. And they're really handy to have around. I also bought these, which are two pass-through ones. So you can connect two components together real easily. And these are pretty nice to have around. So I would recommend getting these type and some of these. This comes in two, three, and five connect levers. So five levers would give you a place to put five wires in. But these things are so much better than wire nuts or soldering up as far as I'm concerned. It makes it so much easier to put things together and take them apart. So then these other two connectors are only two-way connectors. They connect two wires together. And those two connectors are the connector here that goes between the meter and the battery. And the other one is this connector right here that goes from the booster to the to the meter 
to the booster. So these two connectors are these two connectors here. This connector over here, the first one I showed you, that's right in this area right here of the wiring diagram. It's what connects the fan and the plug-in and the boost connector all to each other is on the connector right there. So that's the three connectors that you will need. Two lever, two lever, and three lever connector to hook, get everything hooked up. Um, these wires coming out of the voltmeter, I will warn you, they're pretty small gauge wires. I put them both together, twisted them together, and put them into the same lever hole together, and it seems to be fine. Um, you can do that however you want. That seems to work for me. But I think that's about it. As far as holding everything and managing, I used hot glue pretty much to glue everything together on the internal stuff. I just stuck some hot glue on the underside of this one and stuck it down. These three, I stuck the back of them all together so that the three came together and the levers can still be, the levers can still be actuated even though, so I can take these wires on and off of here even though the levers are glued down. But by being back to back, it just allows me to get that configuration. So. Uh, it looks like a mess here, but in all reality, this is actually quite organized. I think that's about it, except let's talk real quick about the... Uh, where did it go? Here it is. The little resistor. If you're going to have... Let me refresh your memory real quick in case you forgot. If you look at the gauge, some of these batteries will come with a its own fuel gauge uh, status and by how many bars light up. This charger will not update that. It gets its communication not from these two terminals but from the positive and this third terminal. So in order for this terminal and this terminal to connect and update this, you have to have a 1.2 uh, K ohm, a 1.2 K resistor. Uh, I have, I'll have a listing for it in the things, but basically it's just a simple little resistor like this, 1.2. And you take that and you connect it between the positive pole and this third terminal here. And during the charging process, that will cause this light to flash, which causes it to update as the voltage is coming through in there and it senses that voltage change as it goes up and it makes these light react accordingly. So in order to hook that up though you do need to buy that little clip. If you take, let me look at this for an example, you can see the the two clips that are on the regular Ryobi battery clip and there's just two terminals on it. To put the third one in if I put this cap on here positive, negative, and the third terminal is right there in that hole. You can kind of see the metal in there. And so in order to be able to contact between here and that terminal in there, they make these little clips that you can buy. They're just U-shaped and they push down onto here and the inside is spring-loaded so that it may contact to that third terminal and the outside would be out here so you could solder from the terminal over to this terminal with that resistor and you put that in between the two. So, and that's all there is to it. Once that's on there, every time you plug it in then, it also is reading to the that and it's updating the, the status bar while it's also charging to here. It's also communicating to this port then through that resistor. And that's how it works. I've tried it. I've hooked it up, jury-rigged it on here to try it. And it does update it as it's charging if I hook that resistor between those two terminals while it's plugged in. I didn't know about that, to be honest with you, to begin with. I was still trying to figure out how to get that thing to update. And uh, Serendipity Sue did a video on making a solar uh, generator charge a solar charger for the Ryobi batteries and on there he used that resistor and that's where it got me started down that road of figuring out how to make that work 
Since then, I have found one more video about the circuitry of this battery. And he had it actually out on his bench and was looking at all the different circuitry under a real close-up microscope type thing. So you could really follow what was going on. Didn't make a lot of sense to me, but I understood when he was talking about the circuit and how the circuit worked and how it is not connected. That circuit is not connected here on the negative. It goes from the positive through that circuitry and connects to the negative terminal here. So it uses its own separate negative basically is what it does. So if you don't have it hooked up here, the only thing that does is it affects knowing what's going on with the status bar does not update what's going on. No big deal. Like I said, plug this into a regular battery charger, a Ryobi uh, factory one, and it'll update it instantly without any problem. So it doesn't cause any real problems. When you're out in the field, I don't know about you, but I don't care about the status of that battery charge particularly. If it runs low, I'll throw it in the battery charger, grab another battery, and keep going. If I need that battery quickly, the nice thing about having a voltmeter is I can actually see that, oh, it looks like it's reached 20 volts. It's almost charged. I can pull it off even if it's not fully charged. I know there's enough charge in there to get me to finish what I'm doing. So do I need that hookup? No. I would have hooked it up if I'd known how to do it when I made this before, but it's not worth going back and rebuilding this receptacle because that's what I would have to do. You have to build, I, I probably will, if I get enough interest, I'll make one more receptacle with the third terminal so that if you need that third terminal, it'll be available. Now there are some things that go on with this terminal here too, but I don't know exactly what's going on with that one. So, but it doesn't seem to have anything to do with the charging of this thing. This thing functions as a charger, like a trooper, and I'm very happy with it and it works fine. If you want that status bar, you got to go through the steps to add that resistor there. I'll leave you a video. Um, I'll leave you a link to that little clip that uh, Serendipity Sue he put that link in his, and I will put that same link that he had in this in mind so that you can find that little clip because that's the seventh part you may need. You'll need the resistor and that little special clip in order to build your receptacle to have communication on that third terminal. So I hope that explained it. Uh, if you're interested in me making another one of these with that third one intact, let me know and maybe I'll try to put make one more of these that way. I have ordered some more clips. I don't have enough, so I do have to take that clip and uh, wait for until I get some more before I can do some of this, uh, build another one of these. Um, but as far as that being hooked up, when it comes to using this thing as a tool battery or any for anything, like a power outlet or anything, you don't need that communication between these two. The discharge thing will show it discharging if it starts at the full range. And if not, as long as you have a voltmeter on there, you'll be able to tell what's going on from that voltmeter anyway. So you don't have to have the idiot light set up if you don't want. You can just read the voltage. It'll do. It'll tell you pretty closely, probably as accurate as that does. You can read it off the voltage and tell what the status of that battery is. So uh, and putting that on there, it's up to you. I haven't seen any reason why it absolutely has to go on there. If you think that it's important enough, I'll make a video so I can show you how to incorporate that into your receptacles if you want. But I won't be using that. On anything that goes while I'm using the battery as a battery power, I never needs to communicate with that. So I won't be using that anymore since I'm not going to probably build any more chargers. The only time you would want that third terminal hooked up as it stands now that I'm aware of is only if you're charging and like I said you can get by without it I am rambling didn't mean to but I did I think that's everything here if you have any questions about this uh, and you want me to get a closer look at something here let me know maybe I can take a quick picture and shoot it to you in an email but I hope you see enough here and understand now from this second video how to make your own what you didn't know before and like I said, all these pieces, 
or up here on my wiring diagram. So uh, between the two, you ought to be able to make your own now, even if you don't really do this stuff. Remember, do not leave this plugged in longer than it really has to be if you can help it. It's not going to hurt it, but it's always a risk to leave something plugged in even if it's not in use. On something like this, when it comes to lithium batteries, it's best to leave them sit on the shelf without it being plugged into either your tool or the battery charger, just sitting there waiting to be used. Uh, leaving them all the time 100% in a charger has potential risks involved with it. Just like it does if you leave it in a tool, there's possible risk. If something goes wrong in that tool and it shorts out, and it starts that battery is shorting, you will have a problem. So when the battery's sitting there all by itself, those days of the battery blowing up on its own, just sitting there, are pretty rare on on this battery, this type of battery. So that's up to you. It's just a precaution. It's not something that you have <clears throat> that you would have to do. But any questions about any of this? Any comments? Any thoughts? Any improvements that you can think of? Leave them in the comments. Uh, now that I've done, and I'm going to be moving on, I do want to thank you. Please come back again. Hit that like button for me. It does help me. Uh, and remember, I'm nowhere near done. And I hope to see you pictures of yours when you get it made. Just send them to my email. Thanks. And we'll see you guys again. Mark, I hope this helps. We'll see you guys. Bye.